Welcome back. So we've been talking about the fast Fourier transform and solving PDEs. And in the last video, I showed you how to solve the heat equation using the fast Fourier transform. And the heat equation is kind of the perfect example of when to use the Fourier transform. In fact, the Fourier transform was invented as an eigenvector coordinate transformation for the heat equation. Okay, that's why the, the Fourier transform is uh, here today is because of the heat equation. But here I'm going to show you how to solve a couple of other PDEs using the FFT. So I'm going to start with the one-way wave equation, ut plus cux equals zero. Okay, this is a really, really simple PDE where if you have some, uh, some shape like this Gaussian, that Gaussian is just going to travel from left to right at a constant speed c, this wave speed c. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to Fourier transform this PDE, just like before, we're going to Fourier transform u uh, in space to get u hat. We can still take its time derivative, so the time derivative of u hat is going to be minus c times the derivative of, of u, ux. But ux is i times kappa times u hat. So now in my Fourier transform domain, this derivative term, this ux, just becomes an i times kappa times u hat. Okay, so this is going to be uh, really simple to solve in the Fourier domain. We're literally going to take us, our state vector is going to be u hat at all of those frequencies, and we're going to step that u hat forward using an ODE integrator in Python uh, according to this ordinary differential equation. This is a system of ordinary differential equations for every kappa, and we're going to walk this forward using an ODE integrator, a runge kutta integrator. Okay. Uh, and this kappa is a vector of frequencies, u hat is a vector of Fourier coefficients, and, and that's how we're going to solve this. Okay, just like we did for the heat equation. So let's fire up uh, our Jupyter notebook here. Uh, and again, this was translated from our MATLAB codes by Daniel Deluski, um, so I really like his version of this code. Okay, just like before, what we're going to do is we are going to set up our domain over here. Uh, so we're going to have a domain from minus 10 to 10, so the length is 20, uh, with 1,000 points. We're going to define the discrete wave numbers uh, determined by that spatial domain, so de de defined by that length and that number of points. We're going to have an initial condition, which is a hyperbolic secant, uh, which is basically another way of getting a Gaussian. A hyperbolic secant is a nice way of getting a Gaussian. We're going to Fourier transform it to get our initial condition in the Fourier domain. Okay, Fourier transform of Gaussian is another Gaussian. Uh, and then we're going to use this right-hand side function. So this is the exact same right-hand side function uh, that we were writing down here, where the derivative of u hat in time is minus c times i times kappa times u hat. Okay, so that's our derivative right-hand side. And then we're going to solve that uh, right-hand side ODE with ODE int uh, using a, a, a fourth order runga kutta scheme, and that's going to give me my, my u hat. Okay? Now, uh, you don't have to worry about this alternatively code down here. I'll talk about this in a minute. We're going to solve uh, this in the Fourier domain to begin with. And when we do that, then we're going to inverse Fourier transform and make some of these plots. Uh, and this is kind of uh, a visualization of that wave moving from left to right. It's a little harder to see in this perspective, so I sometimes like the top-down view uh, where you look at the, the function u of x and t uh, in this x t diagram. And here you can see clear as day that this wave is moving from left to right at a constant wave speed. Okay, So the wave is not degrading, it's not changing, this shape is staying exactly the same, it's just moving from left to right at this constant, constant wave speed. Okay, So that's uh, a nice way of solving this PDE uh, in Python by Fourier transforming and working in the Fourier transform domain. So that's kind of the first thing we just did was we solved the whole PDE in the Fourier transform domain, and then at the very end we inverse FFT'd to get our state back. Uh, where is the inverse FFT? Uh, here. So once we had the solution, we inverse FFT'd every frame of our movie uh, just for plotting. Okay. Now, there's this part here that says, alternatively, we could simulate in the spatial domain. I think this is really important, and I want to point out how you would do this, okay? So this is kind of the second approach we could take here. 
Technically, I can solve this system in the spatial domain. I can solve, I don't have to Fourier transform and integrate u hat forward. I can integrate this big vector u at every point in state forward in time. But I'd have to find some way of approximating ux, this derivative here. So what we're going to do in this code, this alternative code, is we're still going to use the Fourier transform to compute the derivative. So we're going to take u, we're going to map into the Fourier domain u hat, we're going to take the Fourier transform, we're going to compute the derivative just like we always do by i kappa u hat, but then we're going to inverse Fourier transform to get ux back in the spatial domain. And then our right-hand side function is just minus c times ux that we computed in, in the Fourier derivative. So you can technically simulate your PDE up here in the spatial domain, but we can approximate this derivative using the FFT, the spectral derivative. So it's going to be fast and accurate. Okay, so technically you can solve the PDE in either of these spaces. It's not a big deal to go back and forth. I would say this is a little bit more efficient because once you take your initial condition into the Fourier domain, now you're only working in the Fourier domain and you only come out at the very end when you want to plot something. Whereas here, at every single time step, when we evaluate this right-hand side function, I'm moving into the Fourier domain to compute the derivative and then back out of the Fourier domain to get it back in space. So this requires two FFTs at every single time step, uh, which, which is more expensive. Okay, But it's still a better way of computing this derivative than using some kind of a finite difference uh, or central difference stencil, which would be you know, much more inaccurate. Okay, so the FFT is kind of the most accurate and still a very efficient way of, of uh, simulating this, even in the spatial domain. And the reason I'm showing you this, this alternative is because this is how we're going to solve nonlinear PDEs. Okay, so in the, in the last example I'm going to walk you through, we're going to solve the uh, Burgers equation. I'm going to write this down. So it's still a one-dimensional wave-like equation. We have uh, ut plus u times ux equals some constant nu times u x x. Okay, this is Berger's equation. Um, it's a really, really nice uh, example of the kinds of things you can get in a real fluid flow, like the Navier-Stokes equation. This is kind of a one-dimensional analog of Navier-Stokes of the fluid equations. And what we're going to do to begin, we're going to just ignore this diffusion term here and act like we just had ut plus u, u x equals zero. Okay, And if, if we had no diffusion here, it would look a lot like this one-way wave equation, except the wave speed is now u. It's proportional to the wave height, the amplitude u. And so now I would have my, my wave, and it's still going to move from left to right, but the higher the value of u, the faster that wave speed is. So this point's going to move faster than this point, and as this moves from left to right, that I didn't draw it very well, it's going to steepen on the right-hand side. The, the top is going to move faster than the bottom, and so it's going to get steeper and steeper, and eventually it's going to form this very, very, very sharp shock wave. Okay, so this, so this is actually a nice model of how shock waves can form in fluid flows. Okay, this is like a model of avalanches and other kinds of shock waves. And if we didn't have this diffusion term, this would only get steeper and steeper and steeper. This would just get worse and worse and worse in time because of this nonlinearity, and it would become eventually kind of infinitely steep shockwave. And so that's why we add this diffusion term. This is what's called a regularizing diffusion term or a regularizer, a regularizing diffusion. And it basically is a term that tries to diffuse out that shock formation. So it's balancing out this steepening mechanism. This is trying to kind of flatten everything out and smooth it out. And so these two are balancing each other, and the diffusion is regularizing the problem so that this shock can't form infinitely steep. Okay? And so what eventually happens when you have this regularizing term is that you still have this steepening of the shock wave, but it can't get infinitely steep. It's kind of hard to draw these, but it can't get infinitely steep. There will be some finite width of that shock wave because if it gets too steep, then it's going to have extremely high second derivatives, and this term is going to kind of flatten those out. 
Because remember, the diffusion operator hates high frequency terms, and this shock wave is a very, very high, has high frequency components. So the steeper that shock forms, the bigger these gradients uh, become, and the more that this diffusion is trying to kind of fight that, uh, that, that shock forming. Uh, so these are balancing each other and giving, giving a shock wave. Now, the reason I'm telling you about this, it's, first of all, it's an interesting partial differential equation, but we're going to see how you can use the FFT to solve even nonlinear PDEs like this one. Okay, and we're gonna solve it kind of like how we did up here. We're gonna solve it in the spatial domain, so we're gonna advance u as a function of x, so a big vector of u for all positions x. We're going to advance that in time, but we're gonna use the FFT to compute all of these derivatives very, very accurately and efficiently. That's the key, is we're gonna approximate everything on the right-hand side, and of course I can move this term over and it's a right-hand side. Uh, we're gonna approximate those derivatives using the FFT. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to my, uh, my burgers example here, and pretty much nothing has changed. We have the same domain, same number of points, same kappa vector, same initial condition, uh, and now this right-hand side burgers is the only thing that's changed. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, take our system state u, we're gonna Fourier transform it to get u hat, then we're going to compute the first and second derivatives because we need both of those. And then we're going to inverse Fourier transform those to get them back in terms of a function of space, of x. Okay, so we're going to compute our derivatives in the Fourier domain, then we're going to inverse Fourier transform to get them back as, as functions of the state, vari uh, state variable x. Then we can compute this whole right-hand side, it's just minus u times du, u times ux, plus nu times uxx. Okay, so we're only using the FFT here to efficiently and accurately approximate these derivatives. And then we're gonna solve the, and we're gonna advance the state of the system forward in time uh, just using an ODE integrator. Okay, so that's what we're seeing here. And here is our kind of waterfall diagram where you can see our Gaussian is evolving in time and it is in fact steepening. You can see that the blue curve is steeper on the, the front uh, than it was. And if you look at the top-down view, if you plot this like an image, you can actually see very clearly that as this wave is evolving from left to right, it's also steepening. This, this very, very sharp-edged uh, front is forming uh, at, the, at the rightmost boundary, but it can't become infinitely sharp because of this regularizing diffusion effect. If I got rid of this term, basically this system would get steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper until my numerics failed and the system would kind of blow up numerically. Okay, but this regularizing term keeps that shock from getting infinitely sharp. Okay, good. Okay, um, so I think that is what I wanted to show you, and I'm just gonna do a quick recap. We can solve these PDEs kind of as a big system of ODEs, that's, that's how we think of PDEs numerically, is I can take U, which is the state of my system, and I can discretize it on a spatial grid, so I can basically get u at x1, at x2, at x3, a big vector of my state at all of my locations. So you know this would be my, you know, Gaussian might look like that in, in space, okay? And what I can do is I can walk this forward using ODE int, some ODE integrator, ODE45, some runga kutta scheme, forward Euler, any, integration scheme you like to integrate something forward in time, you can just think of this as the state of the system, and this is the system of ordinary differential equations for every row of your state. Now you can approximate those right-hand side uh, vector fields efficiently, those derivatives, accurately and efficiently using the FFT. That's, that's one way to do that, okay? But another thing you can do is you can actually work in the Fourier coefficients themselves. So you can take your initial condition sometimes, you can Fourier transform, and you can integrate the system directly in, uh, in Fourier space. So at least in the case of a linear partial differential equation, like the linear wave equation or the linear heat equation, you can Fourier transform into the Fourier domain and you can solve your system forward in time in, in Fourier coefficients. The state of your system is your big vector of Fourier coefficients. You can integrate those forward in time. You can step those forward in time. And then when you're ready to plot your system or do some analysis in space, you just inverse Fourier transform back. So you can go, 
kind of Fourier transform to get down. And then once you have your system at some later time, U hat later, you can inverse Fourier transform to get back to your spatial state at some later time. Okay, so you can always go from, from a function of space to a function of frequencies. You can integrate in either of these spaces in time, and you can go back and forth uh, any way you like. Okay, so sometimes it's easier to do one than the other, but the real big point here is that we can use the FFT to approximate all of these derivatives accurately and efficiently so that we can step our system forward in time. Okay, thank you.